হ্যালো यस सर आई एम ओवर लुइस हां सर ठीक सर नमस्कार सुप्रभात मय जयंत दत्त दुलियाजान महाविद्यालयर आईक्यूएसटी जॉइन कोऑर्डिनेटर तोयते आपना सब लोगे आदरणि जनायसु आजिरे राष्ट्रीय पर्याय जिकन वेबिनार प्रकरण विज्ञान विभागर आजि ए वेबिनार खनर तीर्थ मेटल ऑर्गेनिक फ्रेमवर्क द नोवल फंक्शनल कोऑर्डिनेशन पॉलीमर या ए वेबिनार खन आयोजन करिसे दुलियाजान महाविद्यालयर रसायन विज्ञान विभाग आरो सहयोग करिसे आईक्यूएसी दुलियाजान महाविद्यालय आरो वेबिनार खनित आमी समर व्यक्ति हिसाबे आमंत्रण जनायसु हमारे दिसकसेप्ट माध्यम जुरियते एनआईटी नागालेण्ड कर्मरत अध्यापक डाक्टर अमृत पुजारी তেখেতে আমাৰ ছাত্র ছাত্রী তথা আমাৰ মহাবিদ্যালয়ৰ বিভিন্ন মহাবিদ্যালয়ৰ অংশ গ্ৰহণকাৰী সকলোৰ এই বিশেষ বিষয়টোৰ ওপৰত কিছু আলোকপাত কৰিব আৰম্ভ কৰাৰ আগতে মই দুটিমান কথা ক'ব বিচাৰিছো আমাৰ অংশ গ্ৰহণকাৰী সকলক বিশেষকৈ যেতিয়া আজিৰ এই ওয়েবিনাৰখনত ছাত্র ছাত্রী সংখ্যাটো অকমান বেছি उद्देश्य मैं कैसे अनुग्रह तुम लोग प्रेजेन्टेशन चल निजर स्क्रीन प्रेजेन्ट नक माइक मिउट कर रेडिओ तो पारे अफ कर कारण अनाहक डाटा खरच है रेडिओ तो अन कर कारण ये कथाबे आम समल पारे सीखने ये कथा कल দ্বিতীয়তে তোমালোকর কিনা সুধিবলগা থাকিলে চ্যাট বক্স অনুগ্রহ করে তোমালোকে টাইপ করে পেলাই তোমালোকর প্রশ্নবিল দিবা পরবর্তী পর্যায়ে আমি সেই চ্যাট বক্সর প্রশ্নবিল দাঙি ধরে আর তখন উত্তরবিল দিব गति के कबलगिया कथा इार पिछते मैं अनुरोध जान आम महाद्यालय माननीय अध्यक्ष महोदय डर लोकविकास गगेव आज वेबिनार खर आदरणी भाषण प्रदान कर धन्यवाद थैंक यू जयंत दत्त ए भेरी गुड वार्म गुड मर्णिंग टू एवरी वान অনারেবল রিসোর্স পার্সন ডক্টর অমৃত পূজারী ফ্যাকাল্টি মেম্বার্স অফ ডিফারেন্ট কলেজেস ডিয়ার কলিগস এন্ড মাই ডিয়ার পার্টিসিপেন্টস ইটস মাই ফিভিলেজ টু ওয়েলকাম ইউ অল টু দিস ন্যাশনাল ওয়েবিনার অর্গানাইজ বাই দ্য ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ কেমেস্ট্রি in collaboration with IQAC Duliyajan College. Uh, the topic of the webinar is uh, Metal Organic Framework, uh, the Novel Functional Coordination Polymer. And if I say in genuity, uh, my limited knowledge could not cover that theme of this topic. This is my uh, EPS limitation. Uh, but I want to equally attack me. And also, I uh, want to say that uh, I have not heard the word novel before the outbreak of uh, present coronavirus, which is uh, which in turn becomes COVID-19. Uh, the meaning of uh, novel uh, is uh, actually new. Uh, I also tried to search the uh, matter of today's topic in Google search engine. Uh, and uh, what I understand from Google search engine that the coordination polymer is a uh, class of solids, a study of which has been growing rapidly and become one of the most exciting fields uh, nowadays in solid chemistry. 
the metal organic framework is a surplus of coordination polymer uh, as the word novel is also used in this topic so as per my uh, understanding it seems to be a new kind of coordination polymer and to discuss about this uh, novel functional pol uh, uh, coordination polymer uh, today we are fortunate enough to have with us uh, dr amrit pujari uh, faculty and uh, associate dean of student affairs nit nagaland uh, situated at dimapur and i also happy to say that dr amrit pujari uh, uh, is one of my friend and he was my uh, wall mate in hostel life in our university days uh, we are uh, really grateful to you dr pujari for joining us uh, through this virtual platform your yeah my pleasure your deliberation uh, will definitely enlighten our participants uh, especially young minds uh, that is uh, students my sincere thanks goes to uh, dr jitumani bora uh, coordinator and sod of the uh, department of chemistry and uh, also uh, uh, i want to offer my thanks to faculty members of uh, chemistry department uh, uh, for organizing this webinar uh, thanks to the coordinator of iqsc uh, dr uh, dr glanando uh, uh, nath and joint dotto for their uh, Collaborative, uh, collaborative support for this webinar. And I also like to thank uh, Dr. Manoj Kumar Deka, uh, the assistant professor of computer science department of, of, uh, of computer science department of Duliajan College uh, for his technical support. Uh, thanks uh, to all the participants. With this, I conclude my inaugural speech. Thank you. Now, uh, I request uh, Dr. Zitumoni Bora the coordinator of uh, today's webinar uh, to introduce our honorable guest. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everybody. Respected principal of Duliazan College, Dr. Lukbikas Gogoi. Respected resource person of today's webinar, Dr. Amrit Pujari respected teachers from different educational institutes, respected IQAC coordinators and dear students. Because of COVID-19 pandemic, we are all forced to stay <coughs> in our home. We have to pass another several days in these ways, maintain social distancing and stay safe. Before starting the lecture program, I want to introduce Dr. Pujari, our respected resource person to you. Dr. Pujari is presently serving as a professor in the Department of Chemistry and Associate Dean's Student Affairs in the Institute of Technology, Nagaland. He has more than 15 years of experience in the field of research and teaching. He secured first class first position in master degree from Dibugar University. He did his PhD work from Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. He has the experience of two postdoctoral research, one at University, Jem I, Castellin, Spain, and another at CEA, Gamble, France. He has the seven months of extensive experience in the field of synthetic organic chemistry as a research, senior research scientist in a pharmaceutical industry. He published more than 34 research papers in national and international research journal, and also published three book chapters in books published by noted international publishers like Nova Science Publishers, USA. Several research scholars doing their PhD work under his guidance. Already one scholar awarded PhD degree. The topic 
of the today's webinar is Metal Organic Framework, the Novel Functional Coordination Polymer. I hope students can get a clear picture about the coordination polymer with the help of this online seminar. With these few words, I want to request Dr. Pujari to begin his lecture. Thank you. Dr. Pujari. <coughs> yeah. To me, uh, to me start to very right? Okay, okay. So, very good morning to all of you. Uh, respect to Dr. Gogoi, Principal, Village and College, Dr. Bora, HOD Chemistry Department, Village and College, Honorable Coordinators from ECAC uh, Sales, Village and College, Honorable Faculty Members, and my dear students. It would have been indeed a very great pleasure for me if I could have shared a cup of tea and meet physically with all of you students there at the College, then sharing my, sharing my these presentations among you, then sometimes getting embarrassed by some tricky questions placed by some students and enjoying and like in the three video picture says that I'll get back to you. So this kind of situation sometimes we enjoy. This gives us space. Actually, this happens. Uh, I faced this kind of situation several times. And I think you know these uh, the talent pools. Most of the talent pools are being attracted to the NITs. There sometimes we find some students in the class. They ask us some kind of questions which we even cannot imagine. But we enjoy that ones. We mark those students. Later on, we increase our interaction with them. So, for example, one student, I traced like that. Later on, he worked with me, published two papers, but he was from electrical engineering backgrounds. And he has been selected for the Singapore Government Presidential Scholarship to do PhD. And recently, he completed his PhD. And other students, he always asked this kind of questions, and it was very serious. He was actually Bihar government state board toppers. One day he came to us, with asking us, that I, I want to challenge this Einstein equation. I want to write a paper on there. So he wants suggestion for that. So these kind of students are also there. So always it is pleasure to be interacting with the students, and we love the tools. So therefore, today, Actually, I'm planning to have a kind of hazel discussions rather than having a very serious discussions. Because otherwise, chemistry, is, uh, many people get bored easily. After half an hour lectures, they started yawning and all. Right? So I do not know how much I can entertain you, but I will try my level best. So here in the picture, you can see this is the, these are institutes and National Institute of Technology, Nagaland. Institute of National Importance, a small hill center. You can see the beautiful place. We're always welcome to visit this place. And as mentioned by Honorable Principals and Dr. Bora, that I'm working at the faculty in chemistry departments, and also maintaining different administrative responsibilities. Being a senior person, we have to do that. Now, today's uh, my topic of discussion is Metal organic framework, the novel functional coordination problem. And honestly, I would like to say I'm also quite new to this field. Basically, I worked in the field of organic synthesis, applied catalysis, but I'm also associated with uh, different polym development of different functional polymeric materials. I work in dendritic materials polymer nanocomposites, green organic synthesis, like that. So my purpose of giving this topic is I will also learn something because I will have a compulsion to read and everything. Okay. Maybe interaction with, you, with the students, the youngsters, they can enlighten me with some new ideas. That is my basic objectives. So st starting with this, if you speak about 
why you choose chemistry as a career? Now, if I ask students, maybe someone will say, I was really interested in chemistry from their childhood, so I want to continue pursuing chemistry. Somebody might say they have opted for any professional courses like engineering, medicals, but unable to score these required marks. So final options left behind is they have chemistry. Somebody might say they had actually preferred for the subjects like physics and all, but their marks didn't allow to choose the subject, the preferred subject, so they have to come back to this chemistry course. But if you want to ask me uh, why I choose chemistry as a career, then my immediate answer will be that I loved my chemistry teachers during my high school courses. We were enjoying visiting those faculties, those professors, personally, with our bicycles, and exploiting their free of cost teaching provided us to us at the home. So, visually, we have developed interest in the subject chemistry, and I have get into the course. In fact, during that time, I completed my higher course in 1986. So during that time, there was no much craziness like going to the medical or engineering like that. But yes, some people were oriented in that direction. And say from our best five, six students were really interested in those fields and they, even, they were able to make sure it was not that difficult like now. Now the situation is completely complicated. So if we uh, sort out this option, say one, we can say these academic jobs, now the academic jobs are very lucrative. So when I joined my BSc course, my aim was that if I can complete my BSc, then I can become the science teacher at my high schools. Or if I cannot, I can go to other industries like ONGC, oil, and can apply for the post like process equities and like that. That was uh, our aspirations at that time. Because our, my schooling was from the venture schools, but my result was the base at that time till that. So our ambitions were grown like that. So later on, when I scored good marks, good results, we have interested for higher education. Like that, we moved to our destiny. So another important field is the R&D jobs. If you, are, you can complete a good chemistry, uh, MSc degree or PhD degree with a good postdoctoral experience, you, uh, for you there will be many options to work in the different CSR central government laboratories. As a scientist, scientist B, C, they have different cadres. So according to your experience, you can apply for the suitable post. So you have the options to work in the industries as Dr. Bora mentioned, that I worked in a pharmaceutical industry as a senior research scientist. And this poster are also very well-paid jobs. Students can make a note on that. It's a well-paid job. For example, in 2007, when I was there, I had been offered six lakhs per annum package. Means 50,000 per month in 2007. That is a good amount. Apart from that, you have the free fooding during all the day. And if you work till midnight, you go to any restaurant, take your food, produce the bill, it will be reimbursed. That much facilities are available in the restaurant industries. And pharmaceutical, physical industries, there are lots of options for the chemistry to them. Even you can join after MSc as a project assistant. You'll be now, I do not know the exact figure, but depending on the companies, you can get minimum 20,000 salary to this day, minimum. So, someone's prefer to have their own entrepreneurship, they have their own goals, and even many people succeeded in that. So, your professional career can develop like that. And so for someone, it is just like a degree. After that, they want to pursue in other fields, somebody may go to banking sectors, somebody may prefer the civil service jobs and like that. So this is not actually, should not be a part of this discussion, but since many students are joining here, so I thought I should include this part also. 
now coming to this uh, topic since we are going to discuss about the coordination polymer so i think i should have a brief discussion on the polymers polymers i hope for the students it is a very popular topic so why polymer so you know <coughs> sorry polymers are widely used as advanced materials Advanced materials means sometimes we use the term engineering plastics. You know about the nomics, Kevlar, the well-known engineering plastics, extensively used in the defense sectors, medical applications. You can prepare the bulletproof jackets using polymers, your motorcycle helmets, different nano composite with excellent properties, outstanding properties, right? Even the 3D printing technology, I do not have much idea about that, but this is an <clears throat> important topic to be covered in the polymers. And there are lots of applications in aerospace and automobile sectors. And nowadays, you know that the polymer waste, these are also effectively used. You have seen many roads are constructed by using this polymer waste. Recent technologies in development. And even you can get, you can extract the fuels by to a proper processing of the polymer waste. There's some catalytic process involved, okay, which gives the polymer fuels for your vehicles from polymer waste. So, so it is a dominating constituent in the field of organic electronics or plastic electronics. I do not know how much you are aware about these fields. This is actually synthesis and characterization of particular organic materials <clears throat> which display important electronic properties. Maybe this can be a conductor, it can be a semiconductor, so like this. And when the organic material is a polymer, so we say it is a plastic electronics. So it is a growing field because <clears throat> conventional polymers, of course, the silicon polymers is still, is still dominant in this field because they have many good characteristics, but at the same time, so they are expensive too. So people start trying that whether this can be replaced slowly by the plastics of polymer because plastics are relatively cost economy cheap. So many poor countries also can build different energy tech using this organic electronic or plastic. But it's a growing field. You will have number numerous publications in those areas if you search in the websites. So they have important biomedical applications. You know, different polymeric materials we have used for the knee replacements, we have we used for artificial heart valve and medicinal applications, there are innumerable applications. And I am pretty sure that students are very well known about the Teflon, silicon polymers, other polymers. So, like that, this polymers is finding a dominating applications in different fields of sciences. Other important characteristics of polymer that they have low specific gravity and high strength to weight ratio. If we want to say in the simple words, so they are mechanically durable lightweight materials and equally stiff enough. Equally stiff enough. Very convenient to use. That is the important point. Secondly, uh, they are thermal and electrical insulation. I put in a separate marks for electrical insulation because sometimes some polymers they exhibit excellent conductivity. You know about polyaniline, polythiophenes, polypyrols, so these are used as conducting polymers. And different technologies are used actually nowadays. Uh, not nowadays, from maybe 30, 40 years back. Use. So you can dope a polymer with suitable dopant, then you can tune these uh, transport properties. It can be so improved that sometimes they used to conduct like a metal. It can happen. So they have another name like the synthetic metal. Polymer, these conducting polymers, they have this name, synthetic metal. But usually polymers are electrical insulators or thermal insulators. So they have very good chemical resistance, resistance to any sort of chemicals. And 
resistance to any sort of corrosive materials. Another very important thing is that they have outstanding aesthetic appeal. So if you know, if you want a particular colored materials, you can choose it, mix the coloring agent along with the polymerization process, you will get the material that is permanently colored. Not like other cases, it will be, it will permanently stay with the polymeric materials. So that is one of the important characteristics of polymers. And easy to synthesize modification of properties. And it is cost economic, as I mentioned before. Easy to modify the shape and size. I think students might know about thermo setting, but thermoplastic or before done so thermoplastics, thermoplastics has the ability that you can heat and mold it, give the desired shape, inorganic or organometallic polymeric structures that contain a metal centers linked to organic ligands. Ligands, I'm pretty sure you know well about the ligands, what is a ligand? What is the monodented ligands, what is the bidented, polydented ligands? And if I'm not wrong, most of the students you are using uh, these hardness experiments in your laboratory, what do you use the EDTA, Italian diamond dioxide acid, the hexadented ligands? So they have different density. Okay, you know. And coordination polymer it is uh, developed by this Nobel Prize winner, Alfred Warner, he was the pioneer in this field. So they may have different subclasses, like other polymers. Polymers, what you say, that is the repetition of monomers. Long chains can have amorphous structures, normally amorphous, but some of the polymers, they have three-dimensional cross-linking structures too. But like that, here also you can have different dimensional material. It can be extended in one dimensions. You have the same like polymers. It can extend it is two dimensions. You can have layer type or three dimensions network structures. Sometimes uh, two or more individual chains you can join by cross-link. Cross-linking is again an important phenomena in polymer chemistry. I hope the students read about the vulcanization of rubber. And I will say one simple example. So while, while I was working abroad, I used to synthesize polystyrene. There I have used, uh, worked on development of heterogeneous catalyst for enantioselective synthesis. <coughs> you know how important is the enantioselective synthesis? I, I hope your teachers might have explained you in the classes about this. So briefly speaking, from the same compound, R isomer can be the effective against the particular disease, while S isomer it may not. So if you if you can synthesize exclusively the R isomer, that is actually well, it, uh, means extensively good work. Because if you use the medicine both the components, while R isomer will be used for treating your disease, S isomer will be doing some other works, what is called as side effects. So that ultimately leads to different problems. Okay. So cross-linking, uh, uh, that is the bit of enantial selective synthesis. And pharmaceutical industry, they mostly work on this part. They want to develop the extremely pure compounds. Purity, they ex expect, say, 99.9 persons .9 like that. These are the pioneering work in pharmaceutical industries. So now coming to this cross-linking part, so while I was synthesizing the polystyrene there, then my first emphasis was that I should synthesize polystyrene with different porosity. So how we can have this porosity? Porosity, you can see, you understand, right? This is the uh, void space in the, within the polymeric materials. 
porous. So how we can maintain this? What we used to do, I used the divinyl benzene. Divinyl benzene, if there had been a blackboard, now we could actually, but now I cannot. So benzene ring cross uh, ring to two vinyl groups. So what it does, so it used to connect one polystyrene chain with the other. It's a cross link. So that gives you the network structure, three dimensional network structures. Now, if you play with this divinyl benzene amount, say 1%, 2%, 3%, like that, so you can develop materials with different porosity. So after that, what do you used to do? We used to functionalize those uh, polystyrene materials, then incorporate some metal entity in there, the cobalt, the nickel, like that. Then the resulting complex we have used for the selected some targeted synthetic reactions. What is the beauty of heterogeneous uh, catalysis? You know, this is the easy to separate. That is the main important point, right? And if you can recycle several times, it is far better. Far better right? it, uh, means that way you can save lots of solvents. Say it is a, you can say this uh, means use of less solvents means it's more becoming more greener. You know about the green chemistry process, it's becoming more greener like that. So MOF, metal organic frameworks, it is considered as a subclass of coordination polymers. So which are coordination network with organic ligands containing potential voids. It is the very important characteristics of this. So ligands, they will also join the metal centers through the networks. This is giving you a very good crystalline structures, very good crystalline structures with very good porosity, but ultra high porosity I have mentioned here, and enormous internal surface area. It's the most integrating characteristics of the so why surface area, how surface area helps? You know about the, why nanomaterials are more effective than the conventional materials. Say conventional gold, you cannot use a catalyst, while gold nanoparticles are very good catalysts for different chemical reactions. So what actually method is then? The surface to volume ratio is quite high. So that helps uh, in many different ways. So if you have time sometimes, you can approach your research, they will explain you better. Okay. So that is why sir, if you have more surface area, so that materials become suitable for many different reserve applications. And for MOFs, uh, if I remember correctly, this for say kind of materials like dot DUT60, this is a surface area of 7,800 meters square per gram. Maybe that is the maximum surface that I attained with this uh, metal organic framework. So, they're relevant to many different fields. You can use, find applications in organic or inorganic chemistry, biochemistry, material science, electrochemistry, pharmacology, as a sensor materials, and the like. So this is just a schematic representation uh, how this uh, metal organic frameworks are formed. As I mentioned, it is basically a crystalline molecular network. Self-assembly, molecular self-assembly is a very important phenomenon nowadays. So previously, we have made use of these conventional covalent bondings. The polymers say they dominated in the, for quite good times. The covalent bonds were dominating factor in that time. So later on, scientists were focused on this kind of no, many different kinds of non-covalent interactions, leading to this phenomena of molecular self-assembly, which allows you to agglomerate or assemble many different uh, or same molecules to a specific desired extent. 
so that you can have your molecules with required dimensions. So if you can control those parameters, reaction parameters, you can have molecules with different dimensions. If different nano dimensions molecules you can synthesize using the phenomena of molecular acceleration. So it is a quite dominating factor in chemical science and even in physical science too. So whatever structure generated here, therefore, they are quite rigid and quite stable. As I mentioned, they have the high porosity, large surface area, and tunable. Tunable means because entire property is of a molecule depends on the constituents. If you can play with the constituents, say you can play with the organic linker, you can send some substituents and then see the effect. So you can tune the properties. And since because it is a highly porous materials, so definitely they will have very low densities. And Vanderbilt's interactions are already live in here. So normally you can have for other molecules, like other molecules, we use this phenomena of molecular cell present before synthesis of molecules mentioned for many frameworks. And what are the general aspects involved in crystallization of novel compound? These are also equally applicable here. And Dr. Umar Yagi, he was the pioneer scientist who has taken out this to way forward this, this important organic field. So if we mention about the non-covalent interactions, as I told, you know about this pi by interaction, and then bonding interactions, stabilization of pi bond, by polarized bond formed between metal and the ligands, dipole dipole interactions, and many more. Vanderbilt's interactions also mentioned here. So this process is normally weak compared to covalent process. Say, for example, hydrogen bond is having approximately three to four kilocalories per moles of energy. Hyper interactions they have uh, five to ten kilocalories per moles. Although they are weak process, but they are significant in many different ways. So, for the metal centers in Metal organic framework, we mentioned them as node, NOD node. So most frequently the transition metals are commonly used as node. However, alkali and alkali met art metals, these are also used for this purpose. Another important factor so I mentioned you that functionality of the ligand play a decisive role in determining the crystal structure and dimensionality. Of course, this dimensionality is driven by metal center's ability to link to the functional side of the linker. That means that one way it is related to the coordination number. So you are very much familiar with this term. So normally, coordination numbers are most often between 2 and 10. Bonding sites are there, and so they have separate distinct bond angle between the bonds. Even for the same ligand, sometimes, based on the metal ion, dimensionality can be different. Sometimes flexibility of the ligands also matters. Means if the ligand, if the ligand whether ligand is rigid or flexible. If you have flexibles, you can have with has different orientations. Accordingly, the structure will be. Okay. Even for this same group of metal, dimensionality increases with cation size and polarizability. What this polarizability means, having a large electron cloud that is, it can be easily distorted. So coordination numbers usually increases with cation size. Or this is a simple definition you found, uh, all of the students have might have found it. The number of linkers bound to metal node is known as the coordination number. 
So apparently, theoretically, with this coordination number and the recently coordination number and the bond angle, you are able to predict the structure of the compound, subdiary polymers. You have used the common approaches they already have used. You use the hybridization approach, molecular orbital theory, Collinger equation, that's why you have used already. So with this, theoretically, you can predict the probable geometry of the compound. In practice, actually, it is not it's so easy to predict the actual geometry of the molecule. Different factors used to intervene in settling these final structures. Another important uh, metal is the lanthanides. The large atoms, they have these uh, coordinates number schedules from 7 to 10. And although it is a bit challenging to use these metals as a metal node, they are advocated as promising candidate for combination applications. And several publications have already appeared. So maybe I'll make a mention in the later slides. Talking about the ligands, so they have the ability to form multiple coordination bones and can act as a bridge between multiple metal centers in coordination polymers. And here, usually, we use the polydentic ligands. And sometimes, of course, the monodentic ligands are used to get syndex structures. And I hope the students are well aware of the process of chelation, chelating ligands, or we might have studied. So, in the formation here also, uh, this popular hard acid soft base theory, uh, it is equally applicable in coordination. Larger, more polarizable soft metals, which are normally with uh, small valences, they shall coordinate with large, more polarizable soft ligands. Similarly, small, non polarizable hard metals, those are normally with the higher valences, they shall coordinate easily with the non polarizable hard ligands. The same principles it is also applicable in the formation of coordination polymers or metal organic frame, let's say. Apart from that, the crystallization environment, what is the counter and you're using from the metal salt, as I mentioned, the rigidity of the ligands, all these factors collectively influence the overall structure of the metal organic frame. So these are some types of ligands. You can use the carboxylate ligands, phosphate ligands, phosphonates, sulfonates. I have only given a few examples. If you want more, you can go through the different literatures. There are plenty of these things up here. And normally, most frequently use cobalt, copper, zinc, molybdenum, lutetium, zirconium, sodium. These kind of metals are usually used. These are some examples of metal ligands getting used here. And synthetic methods. For synthesis, actually, for a student from chemistry background, it is very important to develop good expertise in the field of synthesis. What is a conventional organic synthesis or other synthesis processes? If you have a good hand in there, then plenty of jobs are awaiting for you. Okay. So here we have used the common synthetic methods like you have an organic linker, you have a metal salt, solvent, heat, and you get the metal organic. This is the simple descriptive route for synthesis. So different synthetic methods are used here. One is this solvothermal method. So, the day I was attending another meeting of one of our students, uh, where we have invited one faculty from IIT Delhi. So, he was explaining to them this what is the solvothermal method. He was explaining to the students that that is your pressure cooker. So, what we do here, 
if we use higher temperature than the boiling point and higher pressures. Usually we use more than one bar of pressures. So using this, normally we mix the reactants and which is a suitable solvent. It can be water also. Then you can say hydrothermal. It can be glycol, glycothermal you can say. Right? Even inorganic solvents can be used. So many, uh, you have the solvents of different size that you have to determine what will be suitable for you. Okay. So you can mix the materials into suitable solvent. We used to plug, means keep it in an autoclave, then apply the required heat and pressures. Then what happens? The isolated metal ions and the ligands, they try to slowly uh, take part in the crystallization. Okay. And finally, it is giving you the metal organ. But it is really difficult. But you have to do lots of, try lots of options, then for sure you will succeed in that. Even uh, scientists are nowadays using the organic linkers and the solvatars and methods. They, they are adopting liquid solid solutions, phase transfer and separation strategies which gives even far better results. We have got nanomaterials with much improved properties. <clears throat> Generally, the cadmium salcosinase and other materials are being synthesized using these methods. Sometimes, uh, another interesting point is that <clears throat> if you increase the solvent temperatures to particular temperatures and pressure as well, Say, for example, for water, say 374 degrees centigrade and 218 bar uh, pressure, 218 atmospheric pressure, sorry, 218 bar. Sorry. Then the solution becomes, the solvent becomes super critical solvent. And it will be definitely super critical carbon dioxide, very often used as a green solvent in many green organic synthesis. Because uh, otherwise, you know how carbon dioxide is empowering our environmental system, how it is increasing our global warming, how it is becoming a threat to this, uh, how it is being sign more significant as a greenhouse gas, right? So, supercritical solvents are also used. And another important with assisted synthesis. So conventional reactions, sometimes what it takes, say, 30 hours, 20 hours in conventional ways, same reactions under microwave radiations, you can complete in 15 minutes. It's really very interesting. Of course, there are many pros and cons with microwave synthesis. So many times, if you want to use it for bulk synthesis, then it may be challenging for you. But usually, they are giving good results. And some way, you can say it is uh, green also. People are advocating it as a green solvent. And we have also used several times microwave-assisted synthesis. So it's very convenient. Even sometimes, you can do the synthesis without use of any solvents. Neat reactions you can do. Another one is this uh, sonochemical synthesis. This one so far, but what I know is that high intensity ultrasound waves you can use, carry out the reactions. You no need to use high pressure. You no need to use the high temperatures. You no need to go for lengthy reaction times, but your product will be at hand. There are many things operating during this sonication process. Sometimes it's a sonochemistry, okay? So sometimes it is happens an implosive collapse of the bubbles takes place during the reactions, bubbles formed within the reaction mixers. You say the implosive collapse takes place. 
again outside the bubbles in the solvent something might happen that will also influence the reactions and when the implosion takes place implosive collapse takes place of the bubble the high jet of high speed of uh, waves that generate that also means affect the physical structures of the resulting products and these factors you can regulate can be regulated by regulating these factors you can regulate your material you can regulate the size of your materials this, this is the beauty of sonochemical synthesis uh, we are trying to use this but uh, yet to have proper expertise in this okay, my students are trying however and is mechanochemical synthesis is another one <coughs> it is another green synthetic approach usually used in MOF synthesis and other processes also. Green in the sense, uh, in most often these reactions are solvent free. Okay. Uh, again, I am not experienced in this field, mechanochemical synthesis we have not used, but we have procured one ball milling machine recently. Uh, I am hopeful that after this pandemic is over, we'll start working in this area also, synthesis of this. So this is the dimensional probability I have mentioned you before. So if we can rationalize the why MOF, I told you before that it is you can have a rational design. You can choose your ligand, you can design your ligand, organic ligands, it can be designed. You can imagine that this can be these are the features we need. If we have these features, these functional groups can be helpful. So you can accordingly can draw one structures, see the relevance. Sometimes uh, we use the retrosynthetic approach. Then what can be the starting materials? You can design your molecule. You can design the synthetic roots, and you can choose the metal atom of your choice accordingly. So you have a rational design for your molecules. And yeah, for sure, this has the readily accessible porosity. This is the important feature of this. And coexistence of inorganic and organic moieties. So this influences the adsorption properties in many okay. We can encourage different gas molecules enter and live in the MOF pores without weakening or sending its structural entity. That is why it can be MOFs are finding extensive applications as gas storage devices used in different gases. We can extract different environmentally harmful gases using this MOF. So that's why it's a very novel material for using environmental field. Okay. So coordination of different types of active sites, as I mentioned now, this metal nodes you can send, functional organic linkers you can send. Okay. Accordingly, your what is analyzed, it will be incorporated there, it can be defined. So they are finding applications, catalysis, sensing applications. As I mentioned, is toxic gas removal. So it is, uh, it is thought that they have the empty space, molecular metal organic framework, they have the lots of empty space within the molecule. So this is rather thermodynamic, it makes it thermodynamically unfavorable. That is why they attract the gas molecules so that they can stabilize the structures and prevent the collapse of it. So they will have a regular tendency to attract the gas analytes. So although the gas molecules, uh, they normally do not form covalent bonds with the surroundings, but they can interact for suitable non-covalent interactions, as I mentioned, like hydrogen bonding, pipe staking. Okay. So when the gas molecules are incorporated, structure, will have little differences. 
properties will have may have little differences okay this kind of ex, uh, results can be obtained so although i am making just uh, making out four points but there are many fields where this metal organic frameworks are getting used catalyst drug delivery and storage device biomimetic applications mimetic study is again a very interesting area in chemical research you can design some molecules to mimic the peptides you know how important uh, how important functions peptides do play enzymatic reactions uh, scientists are yet not able to find out why enzymatic reactions are so prompt so convenient so fast so active so many people start uh, working on this to develop some mimicking materials enzyme mimics or peptide mimetics mimetics we have also tried recently uh, i had one uh, international collaboration project with the russian university there we tried to develop some peptide mimetic compounds then we, if we sort out this striking features of molecular metal organic framework as i mentioned higher surface area which are more desirable for many different chemical processes okay. proper pore size that can be regulated that you can design the molecules that you can regulate the pore size accordingly you can regulate the pore size according to your requirement what are the analyze you are what you desire to extract accordingly you can work to regulate the pore size and most importantly they exhibit reasonable stability upon exposure to oxygen moisture analyte of interest or changes in temperatures and they are mostly insoluble in aqueous media and they are specific structural behavior may allow us to facilitate uh, selective uptake and release of analyze that's that you can uh, that is uh, more applicable say if you want to design some drug delivery devices like that or separation of gas molecules or storage of gas molecules or say energy storage device like that so these are some examples uh, this is these are named every metal organic form they have a typical name uh, that name may not be related to the actual structural framework it, it may relate to persons who synthesize it related to the place say there is one uio 60 say university e oslo they, somebody from there they have synthesized they have given the name like that uio 60 so names uh, depends on the, those factors so this is uh, an important heterogeneous catalyst reported metal apartment okay. if you want to have a look you can go to the reference i've mentioned in the portion this is mof 76 is being used for recognition and sensing of anion this exhibits uh, high sensitivity sensing functions with respect to chloride These are some of these uh, examples. Those are used for drug delivery device. Uh, students may kindly go through the reference mentioned below. You will have the much better idea about those molecules. So I mentioned before this biomimetic applications. So they are finding applications as biomimetic catalyst. So, M M P F six is the molecule's name. So, the highly stable zirconium six cluster, cluster as notes demonstrate impressive peroxidase activity. Mimics with the peroxidase activity. So, this is the peroxidase. In fact, is an enzyme, enzyme which breaks down hydrogen peroxides, a toxin produced as a byproduct of using oxygen. For aspirations. Okay. Luminescence materials. So 
These are some examples. It is a copper one based one and two dimensional coordination polymer compared composed of structurally flexible tetradente diisopyridyl ligand. Okay. So if you use this copper chloride or copper bromide, it gives the one dimensional polymers. And if you go for copper iodides, okay, you have two dimensional coordination. So they have exhibited visible photo emission upon EV radiations. So prospective material for domination applications. This is examples of another luminescent materials, PCN 224. So this is a sensor material that provides a reliable platform for detection of operands. I mentioned about this EYO66, you can see here, this means it's here. So this can be used as fluorescence, nanocentral sensor sometimes. You can see here, after uptaking of copper ions, these molecules, the fluorescence spectrite is being quenched. You can see here, being quenched. So here you say on, this is say off, cutting this metal ions. Like that, it is uh, MOF525 is the name, interesting MOF, that's based on porphyrin and glycolin metal. So it is used for selective monitoring of copper ions. So sometimes you can, uh, this is, this quenching is statistically quenched, means you can use this quenching process to statistically uh, calculate the copper content. So this happens, it is assumed that this happens because copper ion has a good affinity uh, for the porphyrin ligand. Okay. So I told you before that we are just starting this field. Not because that I am very much uh, highly motivated to do this, but because I have a few students who are really motivated in this field. That's why I choose uh, two of my students, they are work, started working in these fields, but their work is just started. They have just completed their coursework. Today, we'll be having their comprehensive exam in the second half. Uh, we tend to have some steep based derivatives. The reason is that they're from stable complex with metal ions. Again, they have high thermal moisture stability and wide spectrum of biological activities. And we have also chosen some carboxylate ligands. We have designed actually, but synthesis still now is remaining as a challenge for us. We are working on that. <coughs> and <coughs> so we are emphasizing on two metals now. <coughs> and we use cobalt. Because you know this uh, biologically significant metal, cobalt, and therefore we believe there will be enough scope to explore the novelty of resulting ion. So they can function as cofactor in different enzyme catalyst reaction, and they have the scope of applying in size, shape, and enanso selective catalysis. They have the ability to mimic enzymes. There yeah, is scope for using sensory applications, self-assembly process, and photocatalytic. So these are these uh, interesting points we used to highlight that, that because of which we are choosing cobalt as one of the metals. And another metal we are choosing is zirconium. Many uh, MOFs have been reported based on zirconium. So they shows high thermal and chemical stability, high moisture stability enhanced gas storage capacity and outstanding stability. So these are the points which affect us and therefore we have chosen zirconium as an atom. So this is uh, apparently this uh, simple synthetic diagram so, uh, for the seed base 
CPS synthesis is a very common synthesis. You will get lots of examples, lots of references in this process. So we are using the literature procedures only, and we have, of course, developed design one on our own. This is, we just say now, for designing the SB1, CBS1, the air spectra, apparently, we are, we can see <coughs> the air spectra, you know, this, uh, the students, you know, that it indicates what kind of functional groups are there in the compound. Suppose, for a waste group, you can see here, this growth spectrum you can have. Carbonyl is appear the sharp peak there, like CSN peak. I just highlighted this point. Other peaks you will find out. So these are, of course, the fingerprint regions. This is, a, <coughs> this is a one proof, but it doesn't establish that the, our material is exact. We cannot claim 100%. We have this product, actually. We have to go for NMR, we have to go for mass, we have to go for elemental analysis, these things we have to find out. Elemental analysis, why we need to do? <coughs> otherwise, <coughs> sorry. otherwise, people do not accept about the purity what you claim. So, elemental analysis would match exactly what theoretically predicted. That's a way to do elemental analysis too mass spectroscopy and MR spectroscopy, then only finally we can characterize this. So this is the mass spectra. So because it is the initial phase, you can see this, it is not a dominant peak here, it's in the display. We can see our product here only. That means uh, the products still have to be verified properly. We have to sort out strategies, how we can get more pure products, how we can increase our yields. So these things we are commonly now trying to explore. This is the higher aspect of the SB2 ligand. This is the mass spectra. So this is little better. You can see the dominant peak is the matter this M plus one peak. Mass spectra peak. So students, if you do not know about the mass spectroscopy, you must discuss with your teachers in your leisure time in the classes. So the very important spectroscopic technique used to maintain organ chemistry. Many more variations are you'll find. Multi mass spectra, uh, ESI, ESI mass, different types of variables here. So you have to have a complete idea about this. And this is the Proton NMRs, we have recorded for this. This compound is looks to be quite pure. This is the carbon 13 NMR. And this in this uh, it is the predicted position from the chemdro, a software popularly uh, used in organic chemistry. So you can see you can try to match those peaks with the observations. <coughs> so you can have the idea about the purity of the product. So elemental analysis uh, we have yet to do because uh, for that we depend on many other institutions. We used to send our samples to CDRI Lucknow, sometimes to Tezpur uh, University, sometimes to IIT Bombay, sometimes to IIT Guwahati, like that. So we do not have all the facilities. So we have to do because of this uh, pandemic situation, works are being st stopped at a specific space. We'll, have, we'll be doing the later phase. So, presently we are trying to use the solvo thermal process. Not exactly we have been able to do now, we have developed these facilities. What we are doing, so we are trying to, we have the autoclax, we are using trying to manipulate the ovens, okay. trying to regulate the temperatures, timing and all. But the process is currently under, in the midway you can say. We have to characterize the products, we have to get single crystal XRD and all, so the crystalline nature of the product. So after that only, completely, we'll be able to see. The okay. uh, mechanothermal process, we are also planning to look into that process. Recently, we have probably the ball-milling machines, so 
I have been inspiration to the work on that. But we have not started yet. So I sincerely acknowledge uh, our principal, religion college doctor, Loko Bikas Gogoi, and Department of Chemistry, Dr. Titu Manipora, all other members of the organizing committee of ICAC Cell Duleden College for giving me the opportunity to share my experiences. I'm also grateful to Dr. Anathi Nagalan for all his support. <coughs> it's a small, this is my small research room, and two of the students are missing from this photograph. So she's also working in the M web synthesis. One more student is not in the picture. Uh, but <coughs> And these two students are working with this metal organic frame of synthesis. So with this, I do not know how much I've been able to entertain you, how much I've been able to explain you about these uh, subject matters. But I have to conclude here. So thank you very much for your presence here. <clears throat> thank you. Gentlemen. <laughs> Did I take more time? Okay. Ah. Any question from students? You can write in the text box. Student can write their question in the text box. Students can write, they can visit our institutes anytime. You are welcome. So they have to give a call to your Bora sir. I will in. Okay. Thank you. Students, if any question from your side, you can ask it directly. Yeah, there can be two reasons. Either they have understood completely or they have understood nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. And there are some questions. Someone is asking a yeah, supramolecular chemistry. I couldn't see the properly the question. Relation between ah. supramolecular chemistry, you can say yes. Yes, we can use some supramolecular compounds as a ligand. Anyway, it is giving you a supramolecular entity finally. So it has some relations there. Ligand, particularly, you can design yourself. That is the beauty of this organic chemistry. Millions of compounds are there. Any ligand, you can, but it should not be uh, abruptly, but you can design a ligand. You should have some logic behind that. Someone has a question. There is another question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe somebody can read out because it is quickly it is going out, this question. Uh, you can see the questions there. Because from my screen, it is immediately going out. Someone is asking about parsing research in MOA or something like that. What was the question exactly? I could not see. Manasjyoti Kaur. There is a question from Manasjyoti Kaur. Once yeah. you said about the polyaniline material. Yes. Yes. Uh, which is actually so redox properties. So, is yeah. there any kind of analytical method to measure this? So, redox is there properties? any kind of. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Redox properties for any compounds, if you want to measure, you can use the cyclic voltammetry techniques. This instrument is there. So that will show the redox properties. There is another question from Ronald Basu. Yeah. Uh, sir, to pursue risk in MOF, one has to study organic as a specialization in MSc. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Because oh. you should have a good expertise in organic chemistry as well as inorganic chemistry. Because, uh, Ms. Basu, uh, so let me tell you something. In our time, we could escape saying something that I was from organic chemistry background, so I do not know about inorganic chemistry. I do not know about physical chemistry. But nowadays, there is no route to escape. If I say I do not know inorganic chemistry, or I do not know this, uh, want to know this part, then I'll be out of the field. Understand? Because there is yeah. nobody is there to hear your excuses. If you say we had this problem, that problem, nobody is there to pay it to that. So if you want to grow up, so you have to struggle. But yes, for MOF, you should have sufficient expertise in organic chemistry and inorganic physical chemistry as well. Am I, am I clear? Or? There is another question. Yeah. What are the difficulties in incorporating desired properties of the ligand? Oh. Uh, uh, ligand into MOF. And if there in any cases when the properties is lost upon attaching to MOF. Yes, means uh, ligand in individually it will have different properties. And when it is associated with the MOF, the property will certainly be sensed. Uh, difficulty means that when we have to design a material, design a ligand, you have to first study that what are the properties you are expecting for the materials. Then how we can have those properties, what kind of functional groups should be there in the linker. The carboxylate groups, always groups. What we say, suppose you want to uh, incorporate some metal analyte. Okay. You know this carboxylate group, they, they have a good tendency to coordinate with the metals, like this. If you have nitrogen centers, the ethyl also encourages coordinating to the metal. Like that, you have to choose the functional group, the organic link card. Accordingly, you have to device your material. Design, design your material, sorry. Mm, there is another question. Yeah. What is the use of supramolecular chemistry in forensics? Forensics? Ah. So, yeah. You can uh, there actually supramolecular uh, chemistry have multi-dimensional. So forensic science, if I'm not wrong, I think you can use you can be uh, get some devices uh, for quantitative sensing or quantitative estimations of constituents. So it will detect the constituents at the same time using these information received from the analysis those informations you can also use to quantitatively determine the amount of the product that sometimes it is possible so i use the term somewhere in the slide the statistical quenching so this kind of things can help in forensic forensic field. So there is another question from Manoj Yeah. Uh, I have an another question about the polymer as a solid support. How can we yes. know the stabilization of a metal by the polymer yeah. network? Stabilization of a metal by polymer network. Yeah. 
so it is actually uh, what i mentioned there this uh, regarding heterogeneous catalysis polystyrene if if he is referring to polystyrene that one then i will tell you the police after getting the polystyrene we used to uh, impeach some groups in the polystyrene surface some functional groups maybe carboxylic group maybe other groups after that maybe you can link one organic molecules there so some covalent attachment to the polymeric surface that molecule organic molecule will now act as the ligand that ligand will hold the metal up like a normal metal organic complexes that ligand will help you to hold this and ligand will be covalent since it is covalently attached to the polymer so ligand will be strongly attached to the polymer so it is it is normally the for heterogeneous catalysis uh, we are we should prepare like that and if you uh, say about incorporating metal analytes in other species we have we are using sometimes the dendritic dendrimers we are using so they have some uh, different kind of internal interaction secondary interaction or primary interaction like that so they, they used to keep hold the analyte strongly okay. so then dimers uh, we are using sometimes uh, we are working in that area also so one or two students working in that field so it depends it depends in mif also they are not uh, covalently attached to the uh, inner surface area uh, but rather they, sometimes they interact in a non covalent way so it is easy therefore it is easy to make the analyte in and take it out that is the advantage there is no more question okay okay hello jandoda jandoda nai niki jito jandoda ah hello jiti ekha ah thank you thank you dr pujari ah yeah thank you thank you, thank you too your delivery is uh, definitely ignite our students uh, yes yes sure and uh, also you have uh, mentioned about some uh, careers in chemistry and you yes, have also yes. some information about your institute so thank you yes. very much <laughs> yes yes okay thank you thank you so we can conclude yeah. here uh, yeah. no no jyoti rakha hello yes sir jyoti rakha uh go forward a vote of thanks for everyone uh, honorable resource person of today's webinar assistant professor of chemistry and associate dean of nit nagaland dr amrit pujari sir inaugurator and the principal duryodhan college respected dr lokpita sugoi sir webinar coordinator and associate professor from hod chemistry department duryodhan college dr ritmani bora sir Joint Coordinator IQAC, Jayanta Dutta Sir and Jayanta Nath Sir, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science, Julian College, and technical support of today's webinar, Mr. Manish Kumar Dekha Sir, and all the respected participants. It's my privilege to have me asked to propose a vote of thanks for this occasion today. I, Dr. Jyoti Dekha Sharma, on behalf of Julian College. Department of Chemistry extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the delegates and organizers for gracing your important work and bless us with your presence by taking out valuable time from your busy schedule. I would like to extend a special thanks to Dr. Amri Pujari sir for his efforts towards metal organic framework, the novel function coordination polymer. 
sir we are grateful for your wonderful demonstration of the topic and for providing encouragement to the team sir your all other extra information have made a valuable addition to the today's topic i like to take a, the opportunity to place on record my hearty thanks to the principal bulliazan college dr lokita gogoi sir for inaugurating today's event i may like to express our sincere thanks to dr dr sir and dr dayananda das sir joint coordinator icuat for providing the platform to organize the webinar in collaboration with chemistry department bulliazan college i also wish to express my gratitude to the webinar coordinator and hod chemistry bulliazan college dr jitumani bora sir for organizing the national webinar and encouraging all to participate we also would like to acknowledge our gratitude to monosh kumar dekar sir for technical support to run the webinar quite successfully i cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and their willingness to face up on the completion of the task beyond their comfort zone thank you sir have a nice day thank you thank you thank you thank you manoj manoj yes sir ami hack ko parbo na ha sir so we are exactly in time Exactly. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay.